Hello, so uh, today's video is going to be on solving quadratic equations. Uh, there are three ways to do this. Um, the easy, not every quadratic equation will factorise. However, if it does, it is by far the easiest way of solving a quadratic equation. Uh, the other two methods are by completing the square and using the quadratic formula, but we won't go into those in this video. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go through four types of questions. So if you have any questions that look like the ones on the screen at the minute, um, then you can follow through the example and get some help with those questions. Before we go into uh, how you actually do these, the, there's a couple of areas, a few areas that you need to be comfortable with uh, in order to uh, do this to do this work. So the first one is to factorize a quadra quadratic expression. Um, the second one is operations with negative numbers and it's also useful to be able to solve linear equations as well. So if you are unsure about how to do any of those three areas I suggest you go away and have a look at those before having a look at this one otherwise this might confuse you. So, firstly, I just want to distinguish between uh, a quadratic expression and a quadratic equation. So, at the bottom of the screen here, um, a quadratic expression uh, is just a collection of, of letters and numbers, uh, and the highest power of the letter is, uh, is, is a squared. Now, an expression does not equal anything, whereas an equation does. So uh, a quadratic expression can become a quadratic equation by making it equal to something. In this case, it's equal to zero. Now, that's really important uh, for the four examples that I'm going to do. One, the most important thing uh, about solving quadratic equations is that they must equal zero. If they do not equal zero, you cannot solve them by factorizing. Uh, you, there's an extra step you need to do first. So the first few examples I'm going to do, uh, they do equal zero, so we don't need to do anything with these. So you are told that f squared plus 13f plus 12 is equal to zero. Now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to factorize the left-hand side, uh, the quadratic part of the expression uh, of the equation. Factorize first. So remember, this is when you look at the positive 12. Uh, actually, let's do this in a little a blue. OK, so we're looking for factors of positive 12. And I want you to remember to include the sign that comes before it. So factors of positive 12. So what numbers multiply together to give you positive 12? I always suggest doing them in pairs. So we've got 1 and 12. We've got 2 and 6, or we've got 3 and 4. As soon as you write 4 and 3, you're just repeating them the other way round, so we don't actually need to write those. We've got to the end. OK, now, of those, we are looking for uh, a pair that multiply together, sorry, that add together to give you positive 13. So they have to have what we call a product of positive 12 and a sum of positive 13. So if I just go through and find out what each of these add up to, that's going to be positive 13, that's going to be positive 8, that's going to be positive 7. So this tells me that my two factors are here. So I'm just going to write out my brackets, we can put that equal 0 bit on the end, and then my two brackets become f plus 1 and f plus 12. It doesn't matter if you wrote them the other way around, if you wrote um, f plus 12 and f plus 1, uh, because actually there is an invisible times in between these two brackets. And when we times numbers, it doesn't matter. When we multiply numbers, it doesn't matter which way round we multiply them. OK, now I want you to think uh, of this. So I'm just going to write this over here. f plus 1 plus 12 is equal to 0. OK, now the question asked us to solve the equation. Now that means find out what values f could be. Now because it's a quadratic, it will have two solutions. They might sometimes be the same, and we call that a repeated root, um, but they will have two solutions. So 
remember I said there is an invisible times in between here so basically it means whatever is in this bracket whatever total that bracket has we're multiplying whatever total this bracket has and when I multiply those two numbers together I get an answer of zero so to get an answer of zero when I multiply two things together two numbers together one of those numbers has to equal zero so that means that either this bracket has to equal zero so I can just write f plus one has to equal zero or this bracket has to equal zero so now what you end up actually is two linear equations so which is why I said at the start being able to solve linear equations is really important so if I take away one from both sides of this equation f would be negative one or if I take away 12 from both sides of this equation to get rid of these bits f equals negative 12 so those are your two solutions to <coughs> to that question those are the two values that f could be you could always check them by putting them back into here to see if zero comes out so for example negative one if i take the first one negative one squared well negative one times negative one is positive one and then i'm adding 13 lots of negative one so that would be negative 13 and then i'm adding 12 so one adding a negative because minus 1 minus 13 gives you negative 12 add 12 does give you 0 and the same would work for the negative 12 the other the other uh, uh, solution okay there's the first one the second one this is why it's really important so we still going to we're still going to look at the uh, the signs that come before them as well we still want a product of negative 12 now this is why it's really important to include the sign that comes before it because we want the factors of negative 12 so if I just wrote out my factors of 12 if I multiply those together 1 times 12 2 times 6 3 times 4 I'm always going to get a positive number so to, multi to multiply two numbers together and get a negative answer one of the two factors needs to be a negative so you could do negative 1 times 12, negative 2 times 6, negative 3 times 4 but the negatives could also be the other way round so if I write these out again and I always suggest you do write out all of the factors the negatives could be in front of these ones now I'm looking for the pair of those factors that add to give me a sum of positive 4 so if I just go through and add these factors up negative 1 plus 12 equals 11 negative 2 plus 6 equals 4 negative 3 plus 4 equals 1 1 plus negative 12 which is negative 11 2 plus negative 6 remember when I have two signs next to each other it becomes a subtract if they're different and it becomes an add if they stay the same and we replace that with one sign so these two signs are different positive and negative make a single negative so 2 take away 6 gives you negative 4 and then this one would give you negative one okay so I, I was interested in the ones that make positive four so that has to be these two here so when I come to factorize uh, I squared plus 4i minus 12 equals zero my two brackets are simply going to be remember the equal zero bit on the end I minus 2 and I plus 6 okay so now what we're going to do is remember there is an invisible times in between here so to multiply those two brackets uh, together and get an answer of zero one of those brackets must be equal to zero so either i minus 2 equals zero or i plus 6 equals zero in which case if i add to both sides to get rid of that bit i is going to be 2 or if I uh, not add, if I take away six from both sides of this equation, I get i equal negative six. 
so watch out because sometimes you're going to get um, when you factorize you'll get two, two brackets one of them will be a positive bracket and one of them will be a negative bracket okay that is the second example third one is this one here so again it equals zero so we don't need to do anything with that um, always check equals zero first we're looking for a product so two numbers that multiply together to give me 32 so I'm going to start by writing out the factors of positive 32 so I can have 1 and 32 I could have 2 and 16 I could have 4 and 8 and that's it okay now this is where some people will go wrong if I look here I'm looking for a pair of those numbers that has a sum of negative 12 so if I add all these numbers up you'll see that the answers are always positive so thinking about it the other way that you could multiply two numbers together and get a positive is if both of the numbers were negative because remember a negative times a negative will give you a positive so if I write out all these factors again but having negatives in front of them and then when you add these ones up you get totals of negative 33 negative 18 and negative 12 so the ones that we want to use we wanted a, a pair of numbers that add to get that add together to make negative 12 and that multiply together to give you a, a positive 32 so negative 4 times negative 8 gives you positive 32 and they add to give you negative 12 so when I come to do my two brackets it's going to be a z and a z and then one of the brackets is going to be minus 4 the other is going to be negative 8 now remember again we've only factorized there we haven't yet solved the equation like it was asking us to do so again there's invisible time so one of the pairs of brackets needs to be equal to 0 in order to get an answer of 0 when I multiply them together so either z minus 4 equals 0 or z minus 8 equals 0 if I add both uh, if I add 4 to both sides of the first equation I get z equals 4 or if I add 8 to both sides of the second equation I get z equals 8 and again those are the two solutions if you wanted to check them you could plug them back into here and see if you got an answer of 0 okay so that's that that's that third example last one now sometimes you are going to get a question where the uh, where it does not equal zero remember the very first thing I said is that to solve a quadratic equation it must equal zero so we need to change this one before we try and factorize it so if we look at the right hand side of the equation that equals 26 T to make that equal zero if I take away 26 from the right hand side of the equation I will be left with zero so remember whatever I do to one side of the equation I must do to the other so if I take away 26 from this side as well now remember that hasn't got a d or a d squared attached to it so we can only take it away from the number part so we're going to have d squared minus 4d that bit will remain unchanged and then negative 70 take away 26 is going to give you negative 96 remember negative numbers work the other way round um, so as soon as that then equals 0 we then have a question just like the ones we were doing before so I'm going to look for two numbers with a product of negative 96 and a sum of negative 4 so to start with I'm just gonna ignore the sign the negative and I'm just gonna find factors of uh, well I'm gonna write factors of negative 96 but I'm gonna ignore the sign and just find factors of 96 to start with so 1 and 96 
you could have 2 and 48, you could have 3 and 32, you could have 4 and 24, you could have 6 and 16, uh, you could have 8 and 12, and I think that's all of them. Okay, so each of those pairs of numbers would multiply together to give me a positive. To get a negative answer when I multiply two numbers together, one of the two numbers need to e needs to equal zero. So it could be these ones, or I'll write the other, write them out again over here. It could be the second lot of numbers. Uh, 3, negative 32, 4, negative 24, 6, negative 16, 8, negative 12. Okay, so now it's worth just going through and adding all of these numbers up uh, to see what their sums are. So this one is going to be 95, this one is going to be 46, this one is going to be 29, 20, 10 and 4 and then these ones are going to be negative 95 negative 56 uh, negative 29 negative 20 negative 10 and negative 4 so we were looking for ones that had a sum of negative 4 so that tells me it has to be 8 and negative 12 so just under here what was the letter d so d and remember to put the equals zero bit this is the question we were factorizing not equals 26 like in the original question so one of my brackets is going to be d plus 8 and the other one is going to be d minus 12. so get again invisible times Therefore, either d plus 8 has to equal 0, or d minus 12 has to equal 0. So if I take away that 8, d would be negative 8. Or, adding 12 to both sides of this one, d equals 12. So those are two solutions to that equation. Okay, so those are the four examples. I'm just going to talk you through the question generator quickly. So I've made another one of these. Um, when you, I'll put a link to this file in the description of the YouTube video so you can download it uh, from Google Drive. It's currently set to four questions of increasing difficulty. Uh, when you open the file, you'll need to click Enable Content, which appears in the yellow ribbon at the top. If you do not do that, then the buttons will not work. So uh, currently set to increasing difficulty. If you want to try a particular type of question, let's say the third type of question I went through, you can get loads of those. Um, once you've got the hang of all of them, uh, I would suggest having a go at a mixture. That way I don't tell you what kind, what level of difficulty it is. Uh, and if you can do a mixture of them all mixed up, obviously, uh, then that will be a really good way of revising the topic to make sure you understand everything. Um, if you want answers one at a time, you can do that. Uh, you can get them all at once. And then you can get as many as you need to. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope it was useful. Bye-bye.